Today, guys, I'm going to be showing you a, um, a, a video on how to program a particular type of uh, CPLD chip on a Xilinx device. I'm working on this little project here from an open hardware design for a retro computing um, project I'm doing. And it has a Xilinx uh, XC9572XL chip on it that needs to be programmed. And unlike uh, EEPROM, there's a little bit more to this. And I thought it'd be worth recording what's involved here for you guys. So um, let me go take you over to the computer here and show you a little bit more. So this is the spec sheet for this particular uh, CPLD that we're using, the, the 9572XL. And in order to program one of these, you, you need to have a special USB cable. And you saw that in the previous shot. It's like an adapter that goes between the USB and the device. And we're going to be using this, a clone of this platform cable USB. Now, if you scroll down through here, there's an example picture of the genuine one from Xilinx. This one we're going to show you in a bit it is a clone of a particular number. This one is a DLC-9G in the picture. This is a clone of a, of a DLC-9LP, which is a little bit older. In order to use this device, we need two pieces of software. Because I'm running on um, uh, Windows 10 here, so I'm trying to show you something that's pretty current. So you need a copy of the Xilinx uh, ISC package 14.7. If you just Google that, it'll come up here to a link like this. And if you go in here and look at 14.7 for Windows 10, you'll get a download link for this. You're going to have to set up an ID in order to download this. But this guy right here is what you want. Now, what it doesn't tell you in the download is it has a prereq. And in order for this product um, to run on Windows 10, they had to bounce it into a container and run it in a virtual machine uh, so that it's actually running on Linux inside the container within the Windows 10 environment. And what they use to host that is Oracle VirtualBox. And so you'll need to download and install Oracle VirtualBox first. Now, it wasn't tested on 6.1. They're actually looking for an older version, and you can go find that in the downloads view if you want. It'll just give you a warning. It works just fine for me. I installed 6.1 at the time of making this video. And then I went over here and installed the download I did for the 14.7 uh, ISC package. So once you get that installed, you'll be left with a couple of icons. And we're going to go into this Project Navigator icon. After you get this installed, this is what you'll get. Now, during the install, it'll also ask you to pick a directory that you'll use to shuttle files between the virtual machine running Linux and your Windows machine. So be sure you enter something in there where you're going to keep your project files. So this is going to take a little bit of time to boot up. I'm not, actually, not necessarily going to burn the whole video waiting for it, but um, as it keeps going, um, we'll come back when it's done. All right, so it takes a while for this to boot up, guys. Um, that's why we skipped ahead on the, the video. So mine's coming up like this because I've, I've ran the uh, program build before, but I'll show you yours should be coming up asking you for a project file. Uh, there's two there's two like kind of views of this like I was mentioning earlier when you set up the virtual box you're going to need to have uh, a view for the virtual box into your Windows file system so you can get your project files so it's going to initially be kind of looking at this this kind of empty structure which is just the virtual box what you want is this ISC structure which is going to end up being where you can keep your project files I stuck mine in this hierarchy under documents and this is this fake 6509 processor project this is actually a kind of a replica of an old early 80s uh, MOS microprocessor that's been out of production for a very long time. I'm actually going to switch this to the all files view because I'm going to go down the path as if you did not have the JED file and we're going to build that from the project file which is going to have an XISE extension. And we're going to open that up. So this is the actual source for the hardware programming. And I'm going to um, kind of try to increase our I'll view down here if I can get the mouse to catch it. There it goes. And then I'm going to select this guy and select this guy for implement design. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to rerun everything. So I'm going to click select this, select this, and then select rerun all. And then you can see down here is where the, all the action is. It's actually going to take that XISE file and the various artifacts that it points to, and it's going to build a bunch of other files. The one we're interested in, of course, is the JED file, because that's what we're going to use to do the programming. And I'm going through this step because this particular project, when I first started it, um, the, 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 the repo did not include a JED file. So I had to figure out how to build my own using this uh, ISE suite. 
and then after that I'll show you the tool that you could use immediately if you already have that. So this goes pretty quick. This is not that large of a design for this particular CPLD. It's getting near the end of the process right now. In fact, it's just got another step to go here. And when it's done with the last step, it's going to pop up an HTML file uh, to let me know that you know it's completed and some stats about it. And there it is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm not really interested in this. And then now with the file built, I can come up here to the Tools menu. And the tool that you could run directly is Impact. This is the tool that would consume the JED file and do the programming. So now that we have one, we can launch that. It's going to tell me it doesn't know what the target device is. That's OK. We're going to tell it as soon as it comes up. And it comes up here. And it's if you take a look at this boundary scan view, you can see there's our JED file that we built in the previous step. So now if I right click on the chip, it turns green. It gives me a bunch of operations. I like to come up and uh, just make sure that um, everything is, is looking good. So I run this chain integrity test. And so it's going to connect to the cable. And I'll talk about that. Actually, I um, forgot to turn the cable on. So why don't we, we just go take a look at the cable right now. In fact, let's just scan over here. And I'll show you the cable since I have to turn it on anyway. And so here we got our cable. This is a platform cable USB clone, DLC 9LP, like I mentioned at the beginning. And the reason it's showing orange is when it's touching the device over here, it's not able to uh, get any voltage from the target chip. And so when you turn power onto the chip, then it'll turn green. It might look a little better if I took some light on here. I just realized it's kind of dark. Sorry about that. So again, you know, if there's no power, it's, it's an orange color. If you turn on your power, it's green. And what that is is just the voltage reference coming from the target board that you're trying to program. So you can see on this particular hardware board, I, I've soldered on some bodge wires to the JTAG terminals that come off the programmer adapter cable so that we can uh, do what we're going to do here. And one of those is a VREF, a voltage reference. And it's just making sure that the Xilinx device is getting 3.3 volts. Now, there's another type of this uh, adapter. And this is a... Uh, JTAG SMT2, and this is another clone. This is a clone of a Digilent type of adapter. It won't work with these XC9500 XL series devices, though. It'll erase them. It'll pull an ID on them. It'll come up and look like it's got a verified boundary chain, but it won't program and verify them. It's something to do with those devices being a little bit too old and this being a little bit too fast and new. See, if you're going to program these particular types, you've got to have a clone of the original. And I'll put some information in the video description uh, about this and, and how to tell that you're getting the right one. You don't buy one that's not going to work for these older devices. The, the other one will work for all the newer stuff, but it just won't work for the older ones. So now with this guy turned on, let's come back over here. And at that point, we should be able to go back and do the operation that we were trying to do before where we were trying to verify that everything's set up to go. So now it's connecting the cable, and now it's successful. Basically, if you don't have a VREF signal, it, it acts as if the, the cable is not available and, and not you know, dead to you. So I'm going to come in here to this cable, and I can either right-click on the chip, or I have the operations over here. It doesn't matter which one you do. I'm going to do a blank check on this guy first. It says it's not blank. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to erase it. Erase has succeeded. I'm going to do another blank check. Good, the part's blank. And now I'm going to program it. Now, this particular old cable is kind of slow, and that's why some of these newer ones, like the other one I showed you, have replaced it. Um, you know, but it's kind of all relative, right? You know, compared to uh, the era that it was uh, in vogue, it wasn't that slow then. So if you need to program one of these things, this is what you got to do. So it takes, um, you know, maybe a, a minute, a minute and a half to get through this operation. The whole thing, if we weren't doing the video here, you can see um, is probably going to take you between five and ten minutes, depending if you run into some kind of glitch or something of that nature. All right, so we're at the end. It's going to uh, do a program and verify, but you can also, if you want to be super, super sure, you can do a manual verify, and it'll go take a look at the JD file and compare the contents that are on the CPLD, and it'll verify that they are identical. And it'll go through and check along on that. And again, you know, you can see visually up here, but you can also see in the scrolling text message of the log 
specifically what's going on and, and if there's any errors there'll be detail down here that you can follow up on but I think we're just about done with this and it's got a couple other things to show you and uh, we'll wrap it up okay so it verifies succeeded so at this point the device is programmed and I can go try it out in, in my project now setting up that cable is a little bit more I want to tell you about that this particular one that I had came with a DVD and on that DVD I'm going to step back here a second on that DVD uh, it's all in Chinese. That's the main reason I wanted to show it to you. And it turns out the drivers are sitting in one of these folders. These other folders are um, either PDF files or there's actually a, a copy of some other software that you can use. But if you go in here, you'll find the drivers. Now, the problem with the drivers, this is Windows 10, so I'm using the 64-bit drivers. The problem with the drivers is that because of this uh, Chinese characters in, in the file name, I found that you actually can't get the install program to run from File Explorer. You actually have to copy all of this to a temporary folder on your hard drive and run it from the command window. And then it'll work just fine and it'll get your drivers installed. And if your drivers are installed properly, you'll see them in Device Manager of Control Panel. And that'll allow the virtual machine uh, to make the connection it needs. And if you're trying to see something about the cable, you can come into Cable Setup. And we can actually see the platform cable is the one it's using. And the other one that I showed you was this Digilent cable. So. Hopefully this has helped you out. And again, just to re, you know, re, re, you know, kind of recap, you need to get a copy of Oracle VirtualBox. You need to get a copy of the Xilinx ISC 14.7 package. And the Oracle Box I used here was version 6.1. You put Oracle Box on first, then ISC. You kick it off from the main menu here. I'm just going to show you here and, and uh, minimize this. And you can actually see these are programs running within this Linux container that is itself running on Windows. So we can see we have all these files over here, but from the Windows side, run the Project Navigator, and that'll allow you to build the JED file from the project. If you already have the JED file, you can run Impact directly. All right, guys, one last thing I wanted to show you is, you know, what if I wanted to launch, um, what if I wanted to just program the JED file by itself? I could directly launch Impact uh, in isolation. I don't need to launch the Project Navigator. So this guy is going to you know, start to boot up like when we did the ISC originally. I'm not necessarily going to show that whole thing, but when it finishes coming up and it's all fully and ready to go, then we'll come back and I'll show you how you can jump in and, and just pull up the JD file and jump straight into programming. So let's let this guy come up and we'll come back. All right, guys, we got it up and loaded. Um, it, you might see a message like this uh, if you've moved the directory. Now, I took the folder structure that we're using in the previous part of the video and I just created a you know renamed it here and I created a new directory and I plopped the JED file uh, the JDIC file that we had built in the previous segment into this new folder so it's going to give me a little warning there it's nothing to worry about now I want to create a a, uh, a new project so I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to pick that folder that I just created earlier and I'm just going to give it a name, default.ipf. Should probably create it normally by itself, but... All right, and now uh, I want to create using a boundary scan. It's going to make sure you have the cable powered on, by the way, uh, so that it gets to this point and doesn't get an error. And now we're going to pick the JD file that we plopped into that directory. And we're going to take the defaults on this. Identify succeeded. We're going to come over here and do a blank check on this device. It's blank. And then we can come over here and go ahead and do a program. And same is the process we did at the tail end of, of the other clip. But instead of using the, the Project Navigator and ISC to build the JED file from scratch from the hardware definition language for the device, uh, this is a case where you, all you have is a JD file, and if you have just the JD file, you jump right into Impact, and you can program the device directly with just that JD file. You don't even need this other thing. So I'm just kind of trying to show you both kind of flavors of this, and obviously saves a little bit of time if all you want to do is get in and program the part. Okay, we've got this program succeeded, and then just for grins, we'll go back and do a verify to make sure that everything took correctly, which I'm sure it did and you'd be ready to go with the device on your project uh, I, as, as you would before. So just going to get this guy all the way over, da-da-da, da-da-da, and then 
we will be done with this segment. So I've showed you how to build the JD file, how to get the whole thing installed, how just to get the JD file if you already have it, somebody else has given it to you in their repo or their project, and how to get it programmed. So that's it. I hope uh, this helped you out with this section, and then I'll go ahead and wrap it up. I hope this helps you out. I hope you found this useful to, you know, cutting past what you need to know to get your project going and program the chip on your project so you can get back to your project. If you have some questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments below. If you found this kind of video useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.